Hi, today I'll be showing you how to code a radial gradient progress, like the ones you see right here in the CSS challenge that I launched on Twitter. We'll be using no SVG, no images, save for at most five CSS gradients, including the background one, no JS, save for registering a custom property, and at most 40 CSS declarations in total, including layout and predefining. Okay, so let's get started. We have two divs here. Each one of them has two custom properties, which are going to be the two gradient colors. Uh, and here we have the diameter of the disks. And this is going to be um, the um, ring thickness, the ring width, I don't know, whatever you want to uh, call it. So this is going to be um, the width of that small ring you see right there. And the other one is going to be double. So um, having um, uh, decided upon that, let's get started and let's uh, maximize the CSS. Let's put something on the screen. So um, we're going to start with the body element. Uh, we're going to reset its margin. We're going to make it full height. So like that, give it a background, um, repeating linear gradient at 45 degrees. And we're going to use those first two colors from there for the background. So let's just uh, copy paste them. Okay, um, and we're going to have the stops at four pixels. And here, again, we're going to have a sharp transition, so we use a zero. And if you're wondering what's with uh, this way of writing the gradient, well, it's the new way of writing gradients, which is simpler and it's pretty well supported. And I've detailed it in the CSS Tricks article, which you will find linked uh, in the description. So now let's move on. We'll also create the div elements. So um, let's give them a background. So for now, we won't be seeing anything. So let's say display a grid right here. Um, grid, grid template columns and uh, repeat. And here we're going to use uh, auto fit um, and that um, value right there. Uh, and in case you're wondering what's with this um, auto fit value, I've detailed it in another uh, CSS tricks uh, article. So cool little CSS grid tricks for your blog. That one is going to be linked as well. So you can check it out. Um, and here we're going to um, set grid gap. Okay, um, let's make it 1M. Let's set also, yeah, uh, place content center. Um, and here let's set a padding uh, 1M horizontally. And let's also uh, set a height here so that we can see stuff. Okay, let's also uh, bump up the font size. So um, font, um, make it thicker, let's say 2M. I meant two M's, um, but maybe three wasn't that such a bad idea. Mono space. Okay. And um, let's make it three M. Probably wasn't such a bad idea. Okay. Uh, now here, both for the div and its pseudo elements. So before and um, after, we're going to set First off, display grid to make our lives easier. And then we're also going to set border radius 50% so that everything is perfectly round. Okay, having done this, uh, let's collapse this part. And I think we can collapse this as well. Now let's move on to the before. Uh, we want it slightly bigger than its parent. So, um, uh, we're going to set margin uh, and this one is going to be minus half that uh, ring width. Um, speaking of which, let's just uh, replace that with a box shadow, which is going to be an inset one and it's going to have no offsets, no blur. And um, the spread is going to be uh, that ring thickness and the color is just uh, going to be that the last one from there. So this should do it. Okay, that looks nice. Uh, next thing we want to do is set a background right here, um, but we're not going to see it until we set a content. So 
let's leave it at this for now. And here we'll be using a conic uh, conic gradient. And this is going to go like this. It's going to use the first color. Uh, we have it set as a custom property. The second one, um, and then here we're going to have P, let's say, 25. Actually, we're going to put it inside the calc. So, um, calc, and this is going to be times 1%, right? And then it's going to be transparent 0%, right? So it's going to look like this for now. But we want a nicer look for that uh, thing. We want only the ring. So we're going to use a mask for that. So um, mask, let's say uh, this is going to be a radial gradient and it's going to go from transparent to red. And of course here we'll be using, um, the thing is, we're using WebKit mask because some things are only supported in Chromium browsers. So that's why we're only using this. Hopefully other browsers will catch up, but for now, uh, this is the issue with support. So here uh, we'll be making this closest uh, side. Okay, so that we can use 100% here. So here we'll be using calc 100% minus twice that uh, ring width. So as I said, the thick ring is going to be uh, twice the width. Uh, and this is going to be, we could set it at zero, but it's going to have a bit of a jagged edge if we are not on a high density display. So to fix that, we just uh, set almost that same value there. So here we're going to subtract another one pixel. And we have to have a space there because otherwise it's not going to work. It's not valid. Okay, so this looks nice. Um, what about the text? Well, in order to show the text, uh, let's say here we're going to use um, counter reset. And we're going to use uh, again that uh, percentage for which we're going to set a fallback again. Um, and here we're going to set counter, right, um, and percentage. But we're not going to see it because, as you can see, it, we see it a bit there, but the rest gets uh, cut out outside uh, that uh, ring. So what we need to do is add another mask layer, and this one is going to be a fully solid one, so it's going to be red to red, but it's going to be clipped to the text. And this is something that's only supported in WebKit browsers, which is why I'm only using WebKit mask. So now you can see the text there, but we want it in the middle. So what we'll be doing here is place content uh, center. Okay, and something else I want to do here is set the color to white. Oh, like this. Okay, look at it, much better. Um, now, having done this, let's add the rounding there. And this is going to be another um, gradient layer, and it's going to be a radial one. So it's going to be radial gradient, circle, at, and it's going to be in the middle horizontally, and it's going to be at um, this uh, distance from the top. So, okay, and then we're going to have the first color, uh, and it's going to go all the way up to that and then transparent oh and of course uh, we need it to work and as you can see it looks nice now um, and we also want a rounding at the other end so what we'll be doing actually let's just uh, set that to 25 so we don't keep setting uh, fallbacks because this is completely ridiculous um, okay, now we're going to have an after, right? So, um, an after. And this is going to be absolutely positioned, uh, and it's going to have padding that's equal to that ring width. Okay, um, content 
nothing okay uh, the alignment is so annoying uh, now having done this let's uh, give it background and it's going to be that second color oops sorry okay and now you can see it but it's there in the corner it's not positioned where it should be so let's position it where it should be so it's going to be margin and it's going to be uh, 0 0.5 times uh, but we're going to need to use calc so put this inside calc and minus Okay, so um, now that I've done this, um, this should do it. Now we're going to need to add a transform. So transform. Um, and this is actually the first time I found a use for uh, the gradient, for the gradient um, angle unit. So if you're not familiar with it. So basically one full circle is 400 gradients. So um, we're going to have to multiply with four to get, um, so rotate calc four times. Um, yeah, this, okay. So having done this, let's also Translate y, and it's going to be minus. Oh, uh, half of it. Sorry. Um, and it's almost, but uh, we're going to need to. Uh, right, so it's going to be on uh, this. Or we're going to need to put it inside the calc. So it's going to be 0 0.5 times that ring width. Okay, this looks much better. Okay, uh, and one thing we can do um, box shadow. Going to be zero zero, um, and it's going to be one pixel. Like this, and it's just uh, going to look perfect now. Okay, having done this. Okay. Uh, now let's animate the whole thing. So to do this, we need to register the custom property. So. Um, this um, name syntax which is basically the type and as mentioned is going to be an integer initial value zero and um, inherits true Okay, so having done this, let's move on here and we're going to have keyframes and um, we're going to use 95%, 100% and uh, it's going to go all the way up to 100, not 1000. Sorry about that. Um, let's collapse this and let's collapse this as well uh, and here we're just going to uh, delete this and add an animation yeah add an animation um, let's say eight seconds uh, linear infinite right so um, this should do it and as you can see it works um, something i'm not completely delighted about i think this is a bit too uh thick of a text i don't know if um 
maybe I should have used a smaller font size. I don't know, it feels a bit too big. Okay, I I'll just be leaving it like this. Because, um, yeah, it, it looks good like this. And I'm just going to leave it like this. I won't be torturing it any further. Um, something else I can do uh, right here is to set uh, something, let's say, like this. And for the second one, for example, so nth child, right, uh, two, we're going to have uh, transition duration, let's say eight seconds, and uh, let's also set a transition delay, minus seven seconds, so something like this. Uh, and now they don't uh, move in the same rhythm anymore. Okay, and this is uh, weird, because it's super laggy, and there's they're still having the exact same. So I don't know what's really wrong here. They're suddenly super laggy. And I don't know. Did I do anything wrong? <laughs> okay, this, this looks good. I have no idea why the second one didn't work. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. So div it's nth child right nth child to um animation duration let's say 13 seconds or i don't know maybe it doesn't like okay it looks laggy if i use something so small um animation delay minus four seconds does it work now i mean it should yeah it does it looks fine now i don't know there was something weird then okay so this is what i wanted to show you for today i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like the work i've been putting out for the past eight years more than eight years i've celebrated my code pen anniversary a little over a month ago um so if you like it please consider supporting it you can do so by becoming a, a patron on patreon so huge thanks to those who have already done that or you can get me something off my amazon wish list uh, both the Patreon link and the Amazon links are going to be in the description, as well as links for other stuff that I've shown in this video. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days, because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching, and until next time.